So when we have Vesak, uh, Vesak is a celebration of the Buddha's birth, his awakening, and his passing away. And why do we celebrate the presence of the Buddha in the world? Okay, It's not because the Buddha was just a, a good guy and a nice person and like that. It's because of his qualities. And what are some of the qualities we, in particular, um, respect and have high regard for uh, in the Buddha are his metta and karuna, loving kindness and compassion. So this is why we celebrate Vesak. We're celebrating metta and karuna. And it's not just saying, Oh, love and compassion are wonderful. They're so great. We should have more of it in the world. That is so easy to say, isn't it? It, We celebrate it to encourage ourselves to develop those two qualities, Okay, to really think about having loving kindness for others, having compassion for others, and We're very fortunate in being Buddhists in that the Buddha taught us how to develop those qualities. He didn't just say, oh, you should love everybody. Good luck. You know, there's a bunch of idiots out there. How You know, good luck. Um, He didn't say, oh, you should have compassion for everybody, but, you know, they're really not worth it. No, the Buddha himself had that impartial love and compassion for each and every sentient being, no matter whether they sentient beings had respect for him, uh, made offerings, you know, believed in him, had reverence. No, it was simply because they existed. Okay? So then that means that each living being, they don't have to create any um, reason for us to love them, okay, or for us to wish them well. In other words, we don't set up a, a, a mental list of criteria of how people should be nice and do nice things, and then we will love them and wish them well. Rather, just because... As, sentient being exists. And this goes for all sentient beings, whether they're humans or bugs or who knows what, okay? The one thing we know about each living being is they want happiness and they don't want suffering. That's the one common thing to everybody. The one thing we know about everybody. Yeah. And it doesn't take a lot to understand that. But when we get in touch with our own wish to be happy and not have suffering, and then feel how intense that is in ourself, and then as we look at every other living being, that person also wants happiness and doesn't want to suffer. And that mosquito wants happiness and doesn't want to suffer. Okay, And Putin and... Hitler and the guy, my boss at work, they all want happiness and they don't want to suffer. Okay? And just knowing that, we get in touch with something very important in each living living being. Everybody wants happiness and why shouldn't they have it? Yeah? Wishing others happiness doesn't mean that we wish that they have everything they want. Because sometimes what people want is dangerous or can be misused in a harmful way. But wishing them happiness can mean that they be free of their anger, that they be free of their greed. Because if they were free of their anger and free of their greed, they would be happy, wouldn't they? Yeah. It isn't that we have to satisfy their greed or kill their enemy to give them happiness. You know, what really makes them happy is to be free of the the klesha, the afflictions. So we generate metta and karuna, yeah, by wishing them to be free of the afflictions, 
Yeah. And, and to not suffer and to have the happiness that comes from developing all of the good qualities that the Buddha has, that we too have the potential to develop. So that's what we want to think about on basic day and have a happy mind that we have a precious human life, we've met the Dharma teachings, and we can develop those qualities like the Buddha did. So happy Vesak, everybody.